thinking for yourself. This is one of the things that people don't really mention in any of these Philippines videos. And although people share their experiences and knowledge, the reality is you need to think for yourself. Um, you absorb the information, then separate bits out that can be relevant, you're interested in, the stuff you're not interested in, and then try and get more information. For example, if I was talking about aquaponics, for example, you may want more information on aquaponics. Um, I had somebody, I think last week or the week before, ask me about shipping container housing. Um, I'm just sorting out some books on it. I've got to find them. Um, but the reality is, you've got to research. I know uh, somebody private messaged me about how much money should you have as an emergency fund in the Philippines. Um, I don't really disclose mine uh, for obvious reasons, but the reality is you've got to have a emergency fund. If you don't, this is where people go down, go out, uh, what do they call it, down and out quite quickly when things severely go wrong. You know, if you get a huge medical bill, it ends up you having to sell the house and everything. You've got to cover your uh, risks and reduce them. That's why it's important you think for yourself. I know in the West it's often a case everything's done for us. Um, I actually find the UK annoying in the sense of paperwork, bureaucracy, but at the same time it's not as bad as the Philippines, it's not as bad as Spain. Um, in the UK you can do most stuff online and obviously they track us a lot more in the UK with the um, cameras on the motorways for example they know if your car's insured, taxed, MOT and if you've got a driving license um, and obviously they can connect that with all the tax system and everything else they know everything about you um, when I arrived at Heathrow Airport and I got a tax return why are they beeping? Um, they actually put the date and time of when I arrived at Heathrow Airport I hadn't given them that information, they had got that from my passport being uh, stamped. That's the difference with the UK. The Philippines, you will get go to a counter and they'll go, oh, you need two passport photos and you need to copy this form and you need to do this and you need to do that. In the UK, the forms are already prepared for you. In the Philippines, a lot of time they expect you to go and copy them for them. Um, Spain's like it as well, they won't photocopy half the stuff for you, you've got to do it for them. They, they like you to come along with all this, the paperwork that they should be doing, or we accept that other countries normally do it. Um, but that's thinking for yourself. When I'm at home, um, one of the first things I bought when I come to Spain, for example, was a all in, you know, the printer with the scans, copies, faxes, does everything, um, because it allowed me to print all my PDFs off of my documents for like pay slips and things but it also allowed me to copy my passport and other documents that they would ask for when I go at the immigration offices um, or open a bank account or registering for tax uh, sorry registering for tax registering um, as a resident in Spain you know all this paperwork requires you to have copies of everything so you've got to learn to think for yourself if you're not used to it It'll take a bit of time, and I, I, I tell you now, it's it's one of those things that if you're used to everything being done for you, it's going to be a bit of a learning curve. But if you're used to being organised in that anyway, it's not really a problem. You're probably more frustrated by the fact that you have to do all this stuff when you're thinking, isn't it easier for you to do it for me? Isn't it easier that I just send you it via an email rather than I print all this paper off that just fills up folders and we're talking... Um, operating like we were 10-15 years ago where you just have files upon files of fire hazards when a simple scan would do the job but hey ho different governments different countries different regulations different rules and different mindsets so you just have to absorb what you can and then also think about things yourself don't just assume because somebody says it's this or that that that's the only answer it's not um, here in Spain, the, the um, registration plates for British cars are the prime example. 
everybody will tell you you can only uh, have a car for six months on Span uh, British plates and you have to transfer them to Spanish plates and you have to import the car etc. There's actually a, another method which is using a secondment as if you were coming to Spain to work and the car's only going to be here temporary. You pay, I think it was about 400 euros I think. Um, but that's that's reasonable anyway, you know, 400 euros to get your car plated and covered for use in Spain, but having to pay over 800 euros to get it, the plates transferred, and then six months later you find that you want to change your car anyway, um, it's much better. So there is always other stuff that people don't discuss. There's also the fact that the expat circles often don't integrate well within communities, so they don't have all the answers. They have the answers they're aware of, which often come from within the expat circles in the first place. Um, I know myself dealing with people from other countries, um, like for example, talking about tax and stuff, The dealing with people from Italy, Ukraine and other places, I find different tax advisors and stuff from people that have been here a lot longer than me and a lot longer and more integrated than the average Brit is in Spain. The same goes for the Philippines. You'll find some expats have been there 20 years and they'll know far more than the average person you bump into. But at the same time, most of them aren't online. They've done the online stuff or were there before the online stuff existed and quite simply don't need it. So you have to find these people and depending on what you're doing, they're, they're very useful. You know, for example, um, James Musselwhite on the farming stuff has a lot of knowledge. Um, there's certain individuals I know in Cebu are very business orientated and also very well connected for setting up a business in Cebu um, because they're married into certain families but they're also not up their own backside. They're, they're quite happy to help other people. So, yeah, think for yourself. Thanks for watching.